Hello everyone, Linda Israel here and I am on vacation so I thought I would record some gel printing for you so you can enjoy that. What I'll do is I'll kind of give you some basic information at the beginning and then I will speed up the process in the video possibly doing a voiceover. So what do I have here? I have a 12 by 12 gel plate and I have a five by seven gel plate beside me. Sometimes I like to work on multiples. If you have this space, it's a lot of fun because you can roll off your brayer onto the smaller one and you get some interesting companion prints. I have a soft rubber brayer. So if you look at it, you should be able to squish it. If you've got a hard rubber brayer, you'll end up with hard lines on your gel plate. I've got a full little bundle of tools. For example, this is like one of those Ranger ink daubers. And I find sometimes that comes in handy if you've got a intricate stencil or design and, or you only want to do a certain portion of it. This works great. I've got some thread spools here, even a shot glass, some cards. In fact, this card, I use my decorative scissors. I don't know if you can see that. So it has a little edge on it. I've got, uh, what else do I have in here? A smaller spool in here as well. So, you know, it just kind of depends upon what you like, what you want to do. You don't have to have a abundance of tools. You can pretty much do this with a little bit of anything and everything. Paint wise, I have some of the Masters Touch, what I call a heavy body acrylic paint. I like these especially for the antique gold. There's another shade of gold and then the silver. And then I have different colors of Anita's acrylic paint. Hobby Lobby puts it on sale. That's why I buy it. Normally it's $4.99. A lot of times you can get it at 30% off. Sometimes they have a better discount. And then I have some friends that have graciously sent me some paint. So that's the basics of paint and the plate, rubber brayer. Today I'm going to kind of do a year in review of all my stencils that I made in the stencil club for 2022. So you'll see all these patterns. Now these are available as a subscription. However, if there's one month that you want, you're like, oh, I'm in love with March and I only want March right now. I don't want to do the subscription monthly. Well, buy it. Once it's shipped, you can send a message or go online to your account on my website and cancel it. That's fine. I don't mind. I really do not. You're, you're not required to keep the subscription going. You can pick one month and do it. I thought about making them individual, but you know, it's just easier as far as the product is concerned for me to just go in and send them out. And again, if you are in a stencil club already and there's a month you missed because it was before you started, just come back and let me know. So here's some of the patterns that I have created for 2022 and I'm just flipping through them really fast. I just put them all in file folders. You get this size of a piece of paper with your stencils so you can do like I did and put them on file folders or however you want to store them. There's December and then this is January of 2023 Artistic Stencil Club. All right so what I'm going to do is get the first one started. So I'm going to start let's start with January and I'm just I think what I want to do is just use every single stencil. Oh I forgot to mention this. <clears throat> and I already have a stencil in because I was cleaning it. I have a tub of water that has just like a quarter of a cap full of some thieves cleaner, a mild cleaner that you like to use. Just put a little cap full in there and it's non toxic. So I don't have to worry about if I stick my hands in there, I'm getting it on my hands. So don't use a harsh chemical. Warm water works great, but it does get cold as it sits here. I usually fill it up till I know that it's covering my stencils and I just put them in and push the stencil down inside the water so that it will get that paint off of it. Sometimes the paint will stick, okay? My gel plate is a little bit dirty, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go with it as it is. I think what I might do is rotate it though, cause it has, looks like some yellow. I put a little piece of tape underneath it so it wouldn't slide on me too much, but it looks like my 
mat underneath is sliding. All right, so it's got a little bit of some dirt on there. I was gonna just go with it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean it a little bit. And what I like to do to clean my gel plate is just put down some paint. So you know what? It's got some yellow and I know it's got some brown. So I'm gonna pick a little bit of green. And sometimes there's little paint goobers. You don't wanna open your paint over your plate because those little crusty bits will fall in there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint. And let's pick this darker blue. And I'll brayer this out. And I'm doing a light hand, just going back and forth across the paint. I've got some book pages laid over here to the side. I will also use my little gel plate. And what I didn't do is get my paper ready. So I'm gonna grab some paper. And I just have some regular copy paper. I also have a few book pages. You could use 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. Use whatever you want. I'm gonna use a little bit of a couple of different things. So I know that I've got a pretty nice print area right here. I'm gonna use a book page to kind of mop up the edges. Got another one here. It makes some interesting prints when you use a random piece of paper to clean up the edges. So I'm just gonna rub all around. And then lift that off. And it got some of it, it didn't get all of it, but that's okay. Kind of makes some interesting prints later on. The more you use it, the more the low, lower layers or the first layers that are on your gel plate will come off. All right, and then here is, while this may not be a gorgeous print, I could layer over the top of that later. So I'm just gonna stick that to the side. I think now my gel plate looks a lot better. So I'm gonna grab the January Artistic Stencil Club. There are three stencil sheets four different patterns. So one, two, full sheets. This is a full sheet, but split in half. It's got two different designs. I'll show you what that looks like. But we'll go ahead and print these. So I'm gonna put that in the middle. All right, so what do I wanna do? I think I'll grab some different colors and just play. So I've got light turquoise. And I have Island Blue. And I just put a little bit on there. Less is better than putting too much. And all my paints just fell over, but that's okay. Uh, less is better at first, because you can always add a little bit more paint. But you don't want to brayer over this a bazillion times either. So I'm just kind of mixing that, going back and forth. Now, if you have the space, I don't but you can take that stencil off and lay it over to the side and use that to mop up on paper. I'm just gonna make some patterns here and there. I'm gonna lift this stencil and pop it in the water beside me. I usually try to put it face down so that the water really gets to the paint. Now, you can immediately pick this up if you want. I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna put another layer of paint behind it and lift it. I am gonna go ahead and make some patterns along the edges. Depending upon your environment, if you have really dry weather, if you have a ceiling fan going or air blowing, it may dry fast. If you are high humidity, it may take longer for it to dry. Drying time, it, it varies. It could be a couple of minutes. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It just kind of depends on your paint and environment, like I said. All right, so I'm gonna give this just a moment to dry and then we'll come right back. This has been sitting for a couple of minutes. It's dry, I can put my hand on it. If you don't wanna do like I did, just lay your hand in it. You can kind of touch the edge to see if it's dry, and it is. In this case, I'm trying to put a pattern and then pull it with another color behind it. So now I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the silver.
Again, make sure I open over to the edge, put some silver down. And I'm layering some over here on this other piece and I'm gonna put down my book page on top of it. I'm gonna grab my copy paper and put it where the stencil was. Grab my, oh, let's grab this mop-up paper that I made at the beginning and kind of grab some of those colors on the edges. And sometimes the key is just to let that paper sit for just a little bit. Now, if you're using old book pages, I would recommend that you either glue another piece of paper to the back side of it or glue two together because they can be really dry and brittle and they will stick to your gel plate and then you got a mess to clean up. So I've been there, done that, listen to my advice. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and peel what was on my little plate. So it's got a little grunginess that was on there before. You know, I may use this to make a little torn cluster or something. Just cleaning up the edges. See, I, I left it too long before I did that one, but that's okay. We'll get that grunginess all the way around. Got a nice little grungy stripe to the middle there. I really like it with the silver behind there. So you can see where I mix the two different colors a little bit so you get the light in the dark. And it may be hard for y'all to see that. I will be scanning some of these that I think are worthy and making digital downloads out of them. <clears throat> All right, so this time I'm gonna do something a little different for me because I don't usually do it this way. I'm gonna apply some colors on my gel plate and possibly use some tools to remove the paint. So we've got the island blue, I'm gonna put a little bit up here at the top. I've got a darker blue that I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put that all the way at the bottom. I've got this light blue or turquoise. Got a little bit more than I intended, but that's okay. And I've got morning blue, it's a real pale blue. So I've got different colors of shades of blues, and I'm gonna brayer these over and kind of clean my brayer off a little bit in between over here on my other plate. And there may be a little bit too much paint, but that's okay, we'll, we'll work with it. All right, so I'm gonna grab a different stencil. Let's do, we'll do this one. It's got that bigger pattern in it. And I am gonna place it somewhat where I know the uh, other stencils have been in the past. And I didn't prepare a sheet, so I'm just gonna do it on some white paper. I'm just lining it up with the stencil. I'm rubbing, trying to get that paint to lift a little bit. And I'm gonna make some patterns on the edges. Make some patterns on my little gel plate. So it got some of it. So I'm gonna come back in here. I see another spot. So it'll just be a grungy bit, okay? And I think I'll add some more texture with a smaller tool. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this stencil. And again, here's where you could lay it on something else. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna lay it on top of this smaller gel plate and brayer over it which will help move that paint underneath a little bit. And I'll grab this first gel print and kind of pick up any paint. So it didn't pick up a lot, but it did remove some paint. So that'll be a cool print. Pop that into the water. All right, so this is still a little bit wet. This one's a lot drier, but it's still a little wet. So I'm gonna give it a moment to dry. Trying to decide what color do I want to put over this. Hmm. I think a darker color, but I don't want it to obscure 
the print below. I think I'm going to come back with this darker blue. And it may be still a little wet down here. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. Just adding some paint. Grabbing my grungy pieces. Now I'll go up this way. I don't know how I managed to do it, but I get paint on me everywhere. I know that there are artists out there that only get paint on their gel plate. I am not one of those. I'm going to let that set a moment, and I'll go ahead and put some of the darker blue. And this was medium blue. I put a little too much. Sometimes I get a little overzealous when I'm working with the little plate, and I'll end up putting too much paint down. <laughs> All right, so I'm just grabbing a book page. I'm gonna lay that on top. Let that set for a moment. Okay, so let's come back over here. So we're getting these grungy edges. Some more grungy edges. Let's see how this print came out. So we got the darker going into the lighter a little bit. So we got some nice little grunges. We're still getting some of the grungy bits coming off the background. So this is a lot cleaner. However, I think I need to possibly make a couple of regular prints that are plain. They're just the paint so that I can use them if I want to lift through the stencil. So I'm going to put some paint on here and make a couple of prints. No patterns, just the paint. I know this is pretty much a clear area, so I'm going to put down this piece. And why not go ahead and use some of my other book pages to clean up the edges. I'm going to let that set for a moment, and let's peel up this one on the smaller plate. It's been sitting for a little while. So all that paint is coming off. That'll look pretty good. I'm going to let this dry for a moment, and I'll be right back. I would let the dogs out. All right, so let's pick up our next print here. We're still getting some grungy areas. It's really cleaning up the plate. A little bit of texture in there. I pushed a little hard with my brayer, but I kind of like the background. All right, so let's grab a different stencil. And I think I'm going to come back with another one from the January 2021. And let's play with it a little bit. I'm kind of on a kick with these colors, so I'm thinking again with the lighter kind of teal color. A little bit of this sky blue. I don't know what it's called exactly. Morning blue. And maybe a little bit of this darker teal. Yes, I am going crosswise. The paint on the back isn't going to look the same as the paint that's on the front. Alright, so let's make some texture on the edges. I'll go ahead and pick up this stencil and then allow this paint to dry. And I think I'll put some more texture in this other gel plate. So I'm putting down my spool and then slightly turning it just a little bit, which helps kind of pick up some of that paint. Got a little close here, but I think I can make it work. All right, let that dry and then we'll lift it. This has been sitting for just a couple of minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and come back in with this medium blue. Got some copy paper, I'm just going to lay down, and then of course my book pages again. So, this is one of the first prints that we made.
let that dry for a moment or soak. And I'll go ahead and put some of the blue over here. Picking up crusty edges. Sometimes the paper wrinkles, it's okay. Kind of like the way that little circle area looked. <clears throat> this print turned out really cool. You know, some of the areas the paint didn't pick up, but that's okay. It left some crusty bits on the gel plate for next time. You can see a couple of spots like that. All right, so I'm just going to sit here and play. I'm just going to grab some paint and play. You're not going to see my face anymore because I'm going to turn that part off. I may even watch a movie and just spend some time playing and experimenting, okay?
right, well, I've spent about an hour gel printing, so let's kind of go back through. This was the Little Daisies, or is it more Little Daisy? Little Daisy stencil. So I used it to mop up on top of another gel print. This one just, I don't know, it's just lots of layers. Sometimes gel printing may not be exactly perfect. Just go with it. I like how this silver looked with the purples. And I was just layering different things just to play. You know, a lot of times you just need to play. Don't fret about how it comes together. And you never know. I apparently stuck with the same color theme. <laughs> I don't know why. It just, it was just what I was feeling today. And that's okay too. You may want to do a whole bunch of different colors. But I think I got a nice little collection of gel printing here i like i think i said i spent about an hour hour and a half uh doing the gel printing i was watching a movie i was watching frozen i've seen it before but and then these are some of the mop up around the edges pages but i i think we've got some good prints here i think what i'll do now is i'll scan some of them and turn them into a digital download so I can use them over and over if I want and or offer them to y'all to play with them. And I hope you enjoyed just kind of seeing me play for a little bit. I'll be back next week and I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, we'll figure something out and maybe we'll make something with these gel prints at the next live stream. And uh, thank y'all for hanging out with me for just a little bit. I greatly appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Comment below which one was your favorite. Um, yeah, just let me know what you're doing, what you're working on. Hope you had a great week. And we'll see you next week. Lots of love to everybody. Bye.